What is going on YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video. We are at the Podium Club here in Casa Grande. I have that sweet little beast right there, the V4R for another track day. And I'm gonna do a little video and sort of my experience from the time I bought it to now and having a few track days and a couple, I think 1800 miles under my belt and really go over what I love, what I don't love and just some other little tidbits that I found about it. And let's discuss the V4R in a bit of detail. Hoping you can hear me with all the wind. Obviously we're at a track, so we got the bikes and the cars, but second track day, 1500 miles so far on this 2023 V4R. And let's start with some numbers real quick. 998cc, 208-ish horsepower, like 80 some pound feet of torque. What does all those numbers really mean? It means that this thing is very fast and very capable and in the hands of a very, mediocre novice-ish person, it's obviously far more bike than I am um, able to extract. But you know what? It doesn't really matter because there's aspects of this V4R that make it very user-friendly, surprisingly. Well, that's not a problem because there's many things about this V4R that make it super user-friendly. So we're gonna talk about the good about this Ducati V4R. Obviously, I just said that it's very user-friendly and there's a few things that make it that way. One is the power delivery. Because this thing revs the 16250 or 16500, if you have the exhaust and the tune, it comes out of corners very, very smoothly. And because of those high revs, there's not that mid-range torque. And you might be thinking, that's a problem. Out here, it, it's fantastic. You stay in the revs. And you never feel like you're gonna spin this thing out from under you, like the V4Ss that I've ridden. They had those torques down low, and it kind of makes you have to sort of baby the throttle as you come out of a corner. Not so much with the V4R, and I love that. Another aspect about the V4R that I absolutely love are these brakes. They are so strong. They have great feel. They have a very strong initial bite. I know some people don't quite like how strong the bite is initially, but me personally, I like that, and then I can progressively squeeze through it. They never let me down. I've actually, because I've only ridden this track twice, when I have to go through a brake, there's a part that kind of creases like this. I sort of target fixated for a split second and almost went in the dirt, but because the brakes are so good, I just leaned on them a little bit and steered back to where it needed to go. Love the brakes on this V4R. The next thing I love are the ergonomics of the V4R. To me, this feels lovely. The reach to the bars is perfect for me. And then to get down, I'm not doing this like I was on my Aprilia. It is comfortable to get down and then to move around on. Sort of tied together, I'm gonna do the electronic suite and the quick shifter. If you put the quick shifter in the GP shift, I think the transmission is absolutely flawless. When you have it the other way around, it has times where it gets hung up and it just, I mean, just a little clunky. The V4R is supposed to be in GP, at least that's what it feels like to me. And if you have one of these, I strongly recommend switching it over because it is honestly that much of a difference that you will notice it. Now the electronic suite, wheelie control, traction control, stability control, slide, like it has all of the Ducati suite of electronics and they work beautifully. They're not so invasive that when you get into a little slide that it tries to really restrict your power. It doesn't have that feeling, kind of like the Honda CBR 1000RR or the Aprilia, if you remember my RC4 1100 factory on track, I would come out of a turn and accelerate and you'd see the lights go and then there's just no power to come up a hill. The Ducati, really manages that so incredibly well. The all-in suspension that is on this, I know it's not the electronic, and for the longest time, I wanted only the S models because I'd liked the electronic suspension. I rode the street more often than the track, almost 99% more street than track, and now I'm leaning more towards the track, so I'm finding that these static manual suspensions make so much more sense because of the adjustability and the tunability. Yes, the dynamic setup or the fixed setup that you have on the V4S where you can sort of tweak it yourself is really good, but this takes it to another level. And if you're sticking to the track, definitely, definitely go this route. I will say on the street, I thought the suspension would be rough and unforgiving. It's far from that. I have a stretch of road before I go home that is incredibly bumpy and a little ridiculous. The suspension keeps you planted. I'm not bouncing around like the older Panigales I used to have would try to buck you off. The suspension is actually pretty plush for what it is. 
And I think that it makes it an okay street bike, not a great street bike. Last good thing is I'm gonna talk about this little guy right here. We're gonna start it up and you're gonna hear some clickety clackety because you're gonna deal with it. Now for the good side of the dry clutch, the sound. I love it. I know you all hate it. Not all of you, but most of you, but I love it. But as far as mechanically, the feel you get from the dry clutch is very different than you get from the wet, especially when you're shifting through gears. There always seems to be just a little numbness when you're shifting gears on a, any bike that's got a hydraulic clutch. Where with the dry, it is bang, bang. Like you feel that mechanical engagement and it is so crisp and so fantastic feeling. Well, I said there was a good thing about the dry clutch. Well, there's also a bad thing. So we're gonna go into the ugly, bad, if you will, things about the V4R. The clutch, like I said, the engagement and the shifts are fantastic. But because of that, when you're just leaving a stoplight or leaving, coming out of the track here or leaving a parking space, it's actually really hard to feather the clutch out. You actually need to give it a little more throttle than you think you normally should. And most people that get on this from any sort of slipper clutch, wet clutch type bike, they immediately stall it because it's, it's gauging that's there and then you stall it. So you, it's something that you really have to get a feel for. And I do think when you're riding it on the street, it, it, the clutch gets heavy. It makes it hard to move around like your hand gets cramps and stuff like that when I've had to go through stop and go traffic at lights the clutch is definitely heavy something I have noticed while going down the highway with the mirrors on and as I'm cruising if you aren't tucked and you're up here these buffet your helmet like crazy and I have two different helmets that I've worn one's a lot more slick than the other one and they both have the same buffeting issue when I, I think it's the mirrors with the windscreen that comes with it it is higher which is nice to get down below but once you come up here this creates a weird vortex, and like I said, it, it just rattles like 75, 80 miles an hour. It is almost like eye jarring, like your, your pupils just do this, it's crazy. Another not so great thing, and maybe it's just me personally, is this thing has a soft 4,000 RPM rev limit in neutral. Listen. Four thousand RPM just shuts it down until you get the tune, in which that makes it go away. Now, something I wish that Ducati will let you do. I know that the flash is meant for the exhaust, but I wish they had a way or a tune that, for a stock bike like this, it could start to unlock some of the freedom that those tunes allow these bikes to have that get it to the, those crazy horsepower numbers. I'm not particularly looking for the horsepower, I'm more looking for the throttle input. While this is super smooth, I know that the one with the tune is even better. So I'd like to have that as an option for a stock bike. And the last thing, and I know I'm gonna get eviscerated for this and I don't care, is the fact that Ducati still does not have a fuel gauge on the Panigales. I've heard because the tank shape is different, well, they made it bigger and have more capacity. So maybe they could have designed a gauge that would work with it as well. I know that there's limitations, but I also know that there's ways around it. They're engineers, they're smart, they can figure this stuff out. And I get it, you online freaking know-it-alls. What do you need a gas gauge for, for a bike like this? Because all of the competitors have it. Why doesn't Ducati do it? I get it, I know, we'll just put that to bed. I also think that it's got a pit limiter. It could theoretically have a cruise control. Again, I know it's a drag bike, it doesn't need it. The V4S doesn't have it either. Just little points like that. I, I know what this bike's for, and I know a lot of you with the street in mind are like, dude, this is a track bike only. Why would you talk about street? Because 90% of the people that buy it are probably gonna ride on the street more than they are on the track. And that's what these are for, the people that are gonna buy this thing and ride it more often on street than on track. And these little notions, these little things might sway you to not get a V4R, maybe get a V4S, but probably go you down the line of something like the Aprilia or the BMW S1000R, the RS4, because 
they have certain creature comforts that the Ducati does not have. I uh, know, I think I said that was the last one, but I'm not done. We're gonna add one more. The heat from this is quite ridiculous. Now, I will say, in all honesty, on the track, I didn't quite notice it nearly as much. It's also only 70 degrees out here, but it doesn't take that long for this to heat up and become just a searing heat on your calf. And I don't mean like, oh, it gets hot. Like, it actually starts to burn your freaking calf and I gotta move my foot out. The old ones used to come up under the tail here and they would actually fry the inside of your thighs with the cylinder head heat. It was, it was always, the guys have always been hot, the pan guys especially, but that spot is quite unbearable. So what does all this mean? What does all this uh, good and bad mean for the V4R? Nothing really, this is an opinion. This is what I've experienced while riding it and the things that I've really enjoyed and some of the things I've noticed that weren't the greatest. That all being said, the V4R is an insanely capable machine. I freaking love riding it. I'm very happy because it sort of brought back the rawness that I, that I thought was missing on some of the other V4 models prior to getting to this point because they made the S's very rideable. Like the SP2, again, very rideable bike. And this, again, as I mentioned, is user-friendly, but there's still a rawness to it. Like, when you get on it and it starts to really pick up as you rev out, it's an absolute monster. And I love the feeling that I have when I get off this because not only do I just think about it all the time, but I walk out there and I'll turn around and just stare at this. It is such a gorgeous machine. And yeah, those are, those are my 1,500-mile uh, review points. The good, the bad, did a ride, and we got some more coming. So with that, I hope you all have a good one. I'm out.